I am not the greatest showman because I am not a man. I am not a showboy and I am not a showgirl. My name is Marissa Karneski and I am a showwoman with two W's in the middle, one for the show and one for the woman. So when is a showgirl not a showgirl? When she is a showwoman, traditionally the proprietress of working class entertainments, she is the boss. She runs the show. I specialise in danger performances. I've been reading fortunes for the last 40 years. Comedy stuff. Bed of machetes. Hair hang. Doing all this bit. And the rifle would be balanced on my knee and I would shoot like that, you see. We do the lines on your hands. I do the ladder of swords. Tarot cards. Cabaret stuff. And then there's the crystal. All singing, all dancing, all the time hanging by my hair. Her showwomanly spectacle is different to the showman's because as a former showgirl, she really knows how to collaborate. Most importantly, her vision is not about exploiting difference because she is different. She shows herself because she wants to. My mother done it, my grandmother done it, my great-grandmother done it, and my great-great-grandmother done it. My family, they all used to live in the bow-top wagons years ago, but my granny and granddad, they used to have a, an old-fashioned wagon. It was all painted all gold, and it was like, to me, it was like walking into a palace. I was 13 when I actually took part in performing in the Wild West show. My dad wanted me to do the sharpshooting. I, I really didn't want to do the sharpshooting, but dad wanted me to do it, and I loved my dad, so I did it. I would be laid on the floor on my back with my legs crossed, and the rifle would be balanced on my knee, and I would shoot like that, you see. And this particular time, it was a, a pump-action rifle, and as you took one shot, you did that, and the empty shell went over your shoulder, and a little boy in the audience jumped up to catch a a shell, because we used to get the children to the front of the shell so they could see. And he jumped up to catch a shell as a souvenir, knocked my arm, and the rattle went off my knee, and my mother was shot in the knuckle. And it was about this time when I realised that our shell was really dangerous. I started as a young child, like most girls do, you know, from about four. When I was 12, I did my first professional show for Bruce Forsyth in Manchester at the Palace Theatre. And I think that's when I decided I was going to, t I wanted to take it up as a career. And then I was very lucky because it was in the 60s and I joined the Tiller Girls, which of course most people remember the Sunday nights at the London Palladium. So my introduction was always from a queer place and a comedy place. It was quite DIY. We were just kind of winging a ton of stuff, trying to like make our aesthetics okay, but it was far more about the ideas. And then everything kind of took off from there and, and really London became my performance home and it was really accepting of um, all the different stuff I wanted to try out. The sideshow community in general, I think we are very protective about over the skills that are very dangerous. First of all, we don't want to talk about it and then have people trying it <laughs> and then die. Um, and also, we like to be in charge of who is going to come and stand in our footsteps later on. There's a lot, lot of people from different backgrounds. We're like from a Romani background. There's Jewish people, there's French people, there's Spanish people, not just English, not just white. It's all different kind of people. She shows us British entertainment was diverse even a hundred years ago. Hers is the perspective of the immigrant, the witch, the daredevil, the activist. She has adventures when and how she chooses. Her act is her vision and she doesn't work for the management or the man. Not then and not now. I was both drawn to it and also I was like, finally something a bit weird enough, you know? It's a, it's a very specific feeling when I, was, when I was trying it out to 
lift my feet off the ground because I had tied it up. I'd, I'd hook the rope around and it was terrifying. Every person that comes in, you know, you do have that little bit of nervousness. But when you're a clairvoyant, as soon as that person walks in, you've got that gift right away. Right away you bond with them. And it's like you know what they want to do or what they've got to do. So it's a funny, it's a hard way to explain what goes on. But a psychic ability, it's very, very powerful. I, do, I remember the first Sunday night the play gym I did, I was standing behind the curtains, you know, waiting for the countdown. Your stomach's doing somersaults, big smile goes on. And the girl next to me, um, I've never forgotten it, she said, when the curtain goes up, she said, it's a fantastic feeling. The applause is deafening and it's a fantastic feeling. And it was. Some of the headdresses, certainly when I worked with Tillers in Paris, we had Yves Saint Laurent designing the costumes. The feathers were absolutely huge and they weighed a ton. So I've never forgiven um, Yves Saint Laurent for doing it. We were kicking in thigh boots, heels, thigh boots. Well, can you imagine kicking in those? Yeah, it is like a performance and you are like a show woman. It's like you put a show on for people and you have your places looking nice and you make yourself look nice. There were set steps, set routines, and boy was it uh, hard work. You know, I wish I had that kind of stamina now. Kicking for seven hours a day, it really was exhausting. When you learn it, you're super frightened because you don't know what happens when you put a big piece of metal into your body. Once it's in your body, you can't see it. So. I don't know what's happening inside. I have a good idea at this point. We do get pains and people get different pains. Sorts of us don't really talk about a lot about the mental health issue that comes with it. So sometimes I do have pain from sword swallowing, but I don't think that the pain necessarily is real. So there's always a mystery that I have still not uncovered that comes with the job, which is frightening, but which is also amazing. So <laughs> I do it both to thrill myself and the audience with something rare. The feeling that I get from an audience when I'm going up and they're like, I have a head of hair too. And you get this moment where they're really sharing something with you. I always felt that as a black woman, I'm not scene. So sword swallowing kind of felt was the right thing to do because there are so few women in the world who do it. And uh, obviously the skill also fascinated me and I saw it also as a personal challenge because once I kind of had the idea of trying it, I, I knew I can do it. In those days, I was just another, just another show girl, another fairground girl as far as I was concerned. I didn't think that I was anything special. It was just a job I had to do, and I did it. If I won the lottery, would I have still danced? Yes. But if I was doing a normal job and won the lottery, would I continue working? No. <laughs> I'm not going to stop until it drop. But really, like, I still feel really strongly like my place is on stage. I mean, I just, I have this fantasy of being able to do it or just whip it out when I'm like 65. It was never my intention to, to be any kind of message giver or anything, but over the course of my time on stage, it's like, yeah, I'm one of the only people of color. I'm one of the only funny females on stage. And that is a massive thing, actually. A lot of females are not allowed to be messy, funny, fat, Asian. It's just like, there's so many things that they, everyone says you're, that's not acceptable to see. I'm hoping that I, again, that I add to this voice of just something a little bit different. She has always been here. Sometimes she is obscured. She often appears in wartime. She is subversive. She is spectacular. She makes covert actions for radical change, using her extraordinary skills in circus and variety. She is Karinga, who worked for the French Resistance. She is Lulu Adams, the first ever woman clown. She is Fancy Chance, who hangs by her hair. She is Livia Allure, who swallows swords. She is hundreds of women whose names we will never know. 
she makes herstory. She makes spectacular visions of new matriarchal utopias. <laughs>